Thank you very much for inviting me to this webinar. And I will talk about a urban landslide that is affecting a town located in South Spain, which is called Arcos de, Arcos de la Frontera. So here, a brief outline of my talk. I will give a, a short introduction about landslides and earth observation for detecting uh, landslides. <laughs> uh, then I will go to explain two studies that were performed in these urban landslides some remarks and an update of what is the current situation of, of the landslide. So uh, landslides are, uh, so just let me, okay, no, sorry. Yes. So landslides are natural hazards, which are widespread uh, worldwide, worldwide. They occur under all climatic conditions in different types of terrains and even in gentle in gentle slopes. Uh, recent studies estimate that between the five and 8% of world's population is exposed to landslide hazards. In the case of Europe, the fast population growth in urban areas plus extreme climatic uh, scenarios can increase the landslide risk in the near future. Uh, this map shows, uh, it's from a study of 2018 and shows the landslide density per square kilometer uh, from the available landslide records gathered by 17 geological surveys of Europe. However, these records uh, can be underestimated. So what is a landslide? Cruden and Vars define them in a very simple way, is the downslope movement of a mass of rock or soil. Why do they occur? There are some conditional factors such as the geometry of the slope or the geotechnical properties of the materials. And there are also triggering factors, for example, heavy rains that will make changes in the hydrological conditions or the reduction of the strength properties due to weathering. Uh, landslides can be classified by different parameters, such as the velocity at which they move and also the type of material and type of motion. And we really have to make an effort to classify landslides because uh, the reality is not, it's always much more complex than that what we would like to. And uh, many times in a, in a single slope, we have a combination of various types of materials, velocities, and so on. So earth observations technologies allow us to detect, map, and also monitor landslides. Data from optical and SAR satellites have proven a great tool to monitor different types of geohazards. When the landslide velocity is high, we are talking here about various meters per month, we can apply offset tracking techniques with very high resolution optical images or analyze amplitude and coherence um, variations from SAR images. On the other hand, when the motion rate is slow, we can monitor landslides uh, using multi-temporal or uh, advanced DINSAR techniques. This provides mean velocity maps and also time series displacement of each one of the measured points. And these techniques are especially suitable for urban areas because the response of uh, man-made structure to radar, to radar is very high and stable. Why it's important to monitor the slow and even very slow moving landslides? Uh, because they can cause severe structural damages to building and infrastructures, and also they might be the precursors for faster and more catastrophic mass movements. Uh, we have to consider that SAR has some limitations when monitoring landslides, such as geometrical distortions that will limit the detection of point measures in certain slopes, also, we have to consider, because of the north-south uh, orbit of the satellites, that north and south uh, slopes are blind to the, to the radar. And also, uh, we have to consider both the sensor and terrain geometry to correctly interpret the, the moving direction. So let's move to the case study of Arcos de la Frontera. So this town, it's a beautiful historical town. It's located in the province of Cadiz in Andalusia, in Andalusia South of Spain. Uh, nowadays, it has around 30,000 inhabitants and it's an important touristic destination. The historical center, let me just, is this one depicted in red 
and it was constructed on top of a 100 meter uh, hill that was carved by the action of the Guadalete River. Uh, since the 60s, the town has doubled its extension, especially to the, to the northwest, and especially uh, due to the uh, house uh, economic bubble, housing economic bubble that we had in Spain between the 90s and 2010, the urban expansion accelerated. Um, so you can see here, we have these new neighborhoods that are uh, constructed in a more gentle, in a, in a gentle slope that faces the, Guadal the, the Guadalete River. Uh, the inclination varies, uh, it's more, um, more relevant in the upper part, and then in the lower part, it's, uh, the, the slope is much more gentle. And this area coincides with a geological, um, with a geological formation that is called the Guadalquivir Blue Clays or Blue Marls. And this geological formation undergoes serious geotechnical problems related to landslides, also subsidence, and so on. So back in the 70s, uh, there were some damages to infrastructures that uh, were related to this, uh, to this geological formation. For example, there were the, the old railway that had to be dismantled, and also this uh, water channel irrigation um, that is used for irrigation that uh, we can see that uh, it is still in use, but they are constantly repairing it, and there are still uh, lots of damages that we can see there. Uh, so what happens with these blue clays? Uh, they are strongly affected by mechanical weathering, which is responsible of the drastical changes in their performance. So when they are not weathered, they have a high consistency and resistance, and they can even be classified as a soft uh, rock. But when they are weathered, the shear strength is drastically reduced. And this is caused by changes in the, uh, in the fabric of the, of the material, not, to the, not, to, uh, not, so, not so much to the um, chemical changes. So when they are not weathered, the fabric uh, of these clays is very compact and dense. And with alteration, the, uh, the, the fabric becomes more chaotic and, and open. So uh, what are the urban damages that we found in this town? First of all, we have this neighborhood that is called Pueblos Blancos. Uh, there were some several damages that we, we found here. But in this case, it's nothing related with the landslide that we can see here uh, the, the geomorphology, the, um, the cartography of the landslide. This is related to uh, the differential settlement of a man-made earth field. So, uh, of course, when we perform the adding SAR analysis, we, we could see that this was moving, but it's not related to the landslide. And La Verbena landslide, here we can see uh, the severe damages of the buildings that, that constitute this neighborhood. It was constructed in 2004. In 2009, uh, the, the, the damages uh, were uh, quite important. So this building was evacuated. And after that, there was a period of heavy rains and then the damages started to accelerate. And in March of 2010, this building was declared derelict. So the damages are very strong here in this part near to the, uh, to the secondary uh, crown, and then they decrease towards the northwest. northwest. Uh, so there were two studies that were performed in this landslide. The first one took the inclinometric and NVSAT uh, data to perform a characterization of, of, of the damages and of the, of the landslide. And the second study that was performed using uh, sentinel ascending and descending data, uh, more recent data, was used to perform a vulnerability map of the, of the, new, of the new town. Uh, so let's go with the first study. Uh, here we can see the, the inclinometric data uh, that was before these heavy rains. 
So we can find, we can see that uh, the velocity, uh, it was of uh, nearly eight centimeters per year. Of course, here we have to take into account that we are measuring the velocity in the plane of rupture, not in the surface. And the DINSAR analysis was performed with a very short data set, just nine SAR images. Uh, those images were, uh, were taken um, in the project that was called NVSAT 2010+. This uh, period of time, the NVSAT satellite was supposed to not be working, but it did. So we took these images uh, from this period. And also the incidence angle was slightly different than from previous uh, images. We choose a small baseline approach to generate uh, um, enough large set of interferograms and use uh, restrictive coherence. So here we can see uh, the, uh, the direction of the satellite is descending. So we can see here in the crown of the slope that uh, the, the movement is coming towards the satellite. Um, also here we can see in red this uh, differential settlement of the earth field. Uh, here in this uh, lower image, we have a cross section of the landslide. And again, we see these uh, that, that the most um, the buildings that are moving at a faster velocity are the ones located towards the the secondary crown of the of the slope. And here we can see the building that was declared derelict. We had this titling of of one side of the building. The second um, study, uh, the Sentinel data was used and a simple methodology to create maps of vulnerable buildings uh, was proposed using two parameters, the Sentinel data, um, well, the, the deformation rate uh, associated with, uh, with the Sentinel data, and the building damage. So in this case, we had ascending and descending data. And uh, combining these uh, uh, two data sets, we could uh, have the 2D deformation field and we could retrieve the east, west and vertical movement. Also, this is a very uh, normally used uh, technique is to project the, um, the loss velocity onto the, uh, to, to the, to the slope of the, of the landslide. Of course, when we perform uh, this technique, we can see that the um, the rates are higher than the ones uh, that, than the ones obtained just with the loss velocity. So what what it was done in this second study was to perform an exhaustive um, damage campaign of the buildings. And each of the building was, uh, was given a category of the degree of damage. Secondary, the, the, the measure points were projected on, in, onto each building block and two, uh, two categories were established. Let's say that the blue category would be the, uh, the buildings that will not be moving and the red category, the buildings that are presenting uh, rates of movement of more than uh, 1.6 centimeters per year. So combining the degree of damage that we have it here, the low, medium, and high, and also these two parameters, the blue and the, and the red, we could uh, create a matrix of what is the, the, um, the vulnerability of each building that we have up here. So we find that most of the, of the buildings that are in this part of the city are, uh, have a high vulnerability. So some conclusions. Uh, in the first study, we used the NVSAT data. It was a short set of images and we could characterize the, the two different geotechnical process, an earth field compactation and a retrogressive landslide um, activity. And with the Sentinel-1 uh, data, uh, because we had ascending and descending orbits, we could, um, we could project the movement into the east-west and to the vertical um, directions, and a simple and fast methodology to generate vulnerability maps by combining two parameters, building damage 
and building the information was proposed. Also, this methodology can be used in other places. Um, just something to say about the landslide, there were some remedial works that were performed between 2011 and 2014. That, but we've seen from the inside data and also from the field campaigns that they were not successful. There are 2.6 million uh, euros already spent, and they are expected to, um, uh, to be at least 1.6 million uh, more to, to, to repair the, um, to, to uh, put these remedial measures. But this second phase has still not begun. And what is the current uh, situation of the landslide? I, we just made this fast um, DINSAR analysis with, I don't know if you know, the, the geohazard uh, platform, which performs a DINSAR algorithms on the cloud. This is the fastball algorithm. We can just retrieve velocity, not time displacement. And the period I studied here was 2019 to 2021. So we can see that this part of the landslide, it's still moving. And also um, we know from um, that, that uh, some of, uh, of the roads here are being repaired because the landslide is still causing severe damages. So thank you very much.